everybody. Hello. Welcome back to Bible Time with the Croft Kids. This is our sixth video that we've made from home because we are not able to meet at church on Wednesday nights right now. So we're doing our kids Bible time together at home and sharing it with you. And so we have been learning about what God is like, his characteristics, his attributes, things that God does. And um, so we've already done five and we've been going in alphabetical order. So I'm going to read the definition and see if these kids know what it is. And I'm not going to do it in order. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I know what it is. Okay, let's see. Are you ready? Okay, this is when God shows deep concern for his people and a desire to meet their needs. Who thinks they know what it is? God is... I know. Say it loud. Compassionate. Compassionate. I know. Yay, a point for Yaya. It's not on the board anymore. It's not on the board. Right now we have suggestions for what to do for science projects. I know. You know it, Pipey? What is it? The magic. Huh? The magic. Oh, okay. <laughs> how, about, how about this one? He is the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Gracie. Um, the Alpha and the Omega. The Alpha and the Omega. All right, point for Gracie. Okay, how about he is the rescuer and savior. Samuel. He is almighty. Now listen, rescuer and savior. I'm going to let someone else have it. I know it. He knows is it. it really simple? He knows it. We did it last is week. He's a deliverer. Deliverer. I'm going out of order. That's why you got mixed up. Okay. He is. He is has absolute power and is all powerful. Samuel. Almighty. Almighty. Yeah. All right. Okay, Pipey. This one's for you. He inspires all. An amazement. He is awesome. Aw. Aw. Awesome. <laughs> Good job, baby. You got it. <laughs> he is okay. So I'll go in order. He is Almighty. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He is awesome. He is compassionate. He is our deliverer, and today we're moving on to the letter E. e. He is exalted. Ooh, so, who thinks they know what that means? Samuel? Exalted. Worshipped. Worshipped, okay. Pipey? Um, what do you think exalted means? I think good. Good, okay. What do you think, Yaya? I always think like above. He's high. Above or high? That's, those are that's a good one too. So exalted is means elevated or high and lifted up, and you worship him when you lift him high and lift it up, and it's good to exalt him. So so those are those are all right. Were you playing with the ping pong ball? <laughs> okay. So our key verse today, and actually we're going to put a uh, link in the description. We have a Bible verse that I made for you guys. And our key verse is Psalm 4610. And it says, Be still and know that I am God, which a lot of people will read that verse and stop there. Be still and know that I am God. And they talk about like being calm and waiting on God and listening, which is good, but... That's not the end of the verse. The rest of the verse says, I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. And so that's our key verse for today. We'll do that in a minute. So what do you think the world exalts? What are some things that the world exalts? So these are things that the world lifts up or elevates. Gideon. Money. Money. Money, 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 money. I know. What? Goodness? Yeah. Well, I don't think the world exalts goodness sometimes, but most of the time we're thinking of like other things. What do you think, Sam? Cars. Cars. Okay, so nice things. Nice cars, nice, nice cars. clothes, nice money. houses. More money. Okay, Savannah. Like your job. Ooh, a job. Like having um, prestige and, and being noticed or being famous. Gracie? Mm. How about... 
<laughs> beauty. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the world exalts the world's idea of beauty, right? We see that all the time on TV and movies and commercials and magazines. What the world thinks is beautiful. Yeah. And like, oh yeah, like Gaston on Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. He elevated himself because he thought he was the most handsomest, strongest, coolest guy. Let me just take all these toys that Samuel has brought to the table. <laughs> um, how about um, being a celebrity? Yeah, like people, especially nowadays with YouTube um, and social media, everybody wants to be famous for something. Um, so being a celebrity, um, new toys, health, wealth, that sort of thing. Those are all things that the world elevates. It's what we spend most of our time doing, what we think about, um, or the world, uh, what motivates us. So the world tends to be motivated by what you can get, what, what makes you feel special, what makes you feel more important, um, what you like, and so it's all a, like a me-centered exaltation. We basically, we exalt ourselves in the world, don't we? And so any time that we exalt ourselves or our desires over God, that is a sin. Who knows what sin is? Sam? Um, bad. Anything bad? Um, I know. Gideon? Something that's bad against God. Something that's bad yeah. against God. Offensive against God. Offensive. Is that the word you were looking yeah. for? Yeah. yeah. Things God rock and roll, like in the trolls. Oh, rock and roll? Like in the trolls? Yeah. Oh, yeah, she was pretty bad. I don't know. We can't give that away, though, but spoiler alert, there's a bad rock and roll girl in the new <laughs> trolls movie. <laughs> yeah, she was sinning even in the cartoon, huh, Gracie? Um, what do you think sin is? Um, so kind of. Satan, like, tempting you, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, so sin is anything that you do or say or think that is offensive to God, that is um, against what God, his nature, his word, his character, anything that is um, opposite of who God is and what God wants for us. And so anything, anytime that we lift ourselves up, exalt ourselves above God, then we are sinning. So we're going to talk about, we're going to read a scripture together. It's in Isaiah chapter 6. And we're going to read verses 1 through, what did I say? 1 through 8. Here, Pipey, I'll get it for you. Isaiah chapter 6. It's hiding from me. I got to find it soon. Oh, where can it be? There you are, Isaiah chapter six. Okay, so we're gonna just read it together. And what we do sometimes at our fam uh, like family devotions time, family worship time, is um, everybody just kind of reads different verses when they want to. So, um, who wants to read first? Pipey? Okay, Pipey, you're gonna read verse one. Are you ready? Okay. You gotta say it really loud, okay? In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw, I saw the Lord, Lord sitting, sitting upon a throne, upon a throne high, high and lifted up, and the train, the train of his robe filled the temple. Thank you. Okay, who else wants to read? Savannah, you read verses 2 and 3. Above him stood the seraphim, each had six wings, with two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of his glory. Alright. Uh, Gracie, can you read verse 4 and 5? Mm -hmm. And the foundations, foundations? foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called who called and the house was filled with smoke 
and and I said, Whoa. 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 Whoa means like, Whoa. Um, I am undone. Whoa. Whoa is me. For I am lost. For, I'm, for I am lost. I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell the midst. Midst. The midst of a people of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. All right, and then Gideon, can you read six and seven? Then one of the seraphim mm -hmm. flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. All right, Sam, read verse eight. And I heard the voice from the Lord saying, Whom, Who shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. Very good. Okay, so let's recap. King Uzziah was the king for 52 years, the king of Israel. And for the most part, he was a good king. The Bible says in 2 Kings chapter 15 that he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. He tried to follow God and lead his country to do the same. Um, that doesn't mean he was perfect, but there's a lot of kings listed in the Old Testament and very few of them were considered good kings. <laughs> a lot of them were wicked kings. And so King Uzziah was considered a good king and then he had died. And Isaiah was a prophet at the time. Who knows what a prophet is? Someone who talks to God. Someone who would talk, listen to God and he would tell what God had to say to the people. And so Isaiah was God's prophet at the time. And Isaiah was sad because he had lost this good and wise king. And now he's like worried about what's going to happen next. So Isaiah has this vision of God. And where does he see God? In heaven. In heaven. On a throne. And it says he was high and exalted and high and lifted up. And so he sees God high and lifted up, sitting on a throne. What were some of the other things that he saw? Angels. He saw angels. And his robe was so long it filled the room. His robe was so long it filled the entire room. And there was smoke and it was just this awesome, remember one of our words? It was one of this, an awesome sight. It inspired awe in him. Um, why was it important that he saw God sitting on the throne? Because he would know that God is still king. Exactly. Savannah, did you read my notes? No. You're so smart. Yes, so it was so that he would know that even though the earthly king Uzziah had died, that God is the king of kings. He kings over the kings. And so he was still reigning and that he was, it was a reminder to Isaiah that God was, um, that God's people didn't need a king like the other nations because God was their king and he would reign forever from heaven. God's throne was high and exalted, showing that he was and always will be king over all things. So when we say God is king of kings, do we mean that God is only the king over royalty? No. No. What does king of kings mean, Samuel? King of everything. He's the king of everything. So it's like saying he's like the top, top boss of everybody and everything. And so God, seeing God's throne high and lifted up and exalted um, was a way for them to see that God was has complete authority and power and sovereignty over all things. Um, what were the seraphim shouting? Does anybody remember? Holy, holy. They were shouting at the top of their lungs, it says. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. They said it three times. Anytime the Bible says a word three times in a row, it's pretty important. You better wake up and pay attention, right? Oh, it just reminded me of Sister Anne. Wake up and pay attention. Are you listening? Okay, no. so holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. What else did they say? The whole, the whole earth is full of his glory. And so that's what their job was. 
They just flew around the throne room all day, every day, for all of eternity, screaming out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. If that's their one and only job in heaven, do you think it's a pretty important thing that we remember? Do you, think, do you think it's something important that we should know? That God is holy and that God is, that his glory is very important to him and that he is high and lifted up and exalted. So when Isaiah saw God and he heard the angels singing about his holiness, he got afraid, right? He was frightened. And why do you think he was afraid? Because he he's never seen he's, anything like that was before. He's really simple. He'd never seen anything like that before. And then why? He's sinful. He was sinful. Yeah. So he's seeing this amazing thing. He's seeing God, which he said in, in Exodus chapter 33, it says, no one can see the Lord alive and live. Sorry. No one can see the Lord and live. So he's thinking, I'm going to die because I can see God on the throne. Of course, he was having a vision, so he wasn't actually there but he was god was allowing him to see this vision of heaven and the throne room and so he was afraid because he knew that he was a sinner and actually gracie read it it says um where was it at verse what is it? Four, five it says woe is me for i am lost I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord. So even God's person who was speaking his words for him knew that his mouth had sinned, that he had sinned in, he had sinned in his heart, and he also had, he said he was a man of unclean lips. And so he feared being in the presence of God. And so in, um, God had an angel fly down and get a coal burning coal um, put and it on put it face. where on his, face. Face. On his lips on his lips face. he touched it to his lips and then what did he tell him uh, so now you forgiven well he said your sins are atoned for what is atonement uh, clean like covered? no covered covered right so your sins have been covered um, just like it's the same idea of when God covered Adam and Eve's uh, sin and their nakedness in the garden of Eden when he uh, killed the lamb and then made clothes for them and covered their sin and their nakedness. And so the angel came down, touched Isaiah's lips and said, your sins have been atoned for. And who's allowed to atone for sin? God. Only God. Only God, right? And Jesus. Only Jesus. And so God, um, Isaiah knew that he was in the presence of God and that, and that he was in the presence of Jesus because only Jesus can atone for sins. And then God says um, he wants to send someone out to tell the people uh, his message. And um, he says, who, who, who can I send? Um, and then Isaiah says, send me, send me. Um, and God basically tells him further down in the story or in the chapter that he's going to send him out with a message and that no one is going to listen to him. <laughs> and so that, that story, um, it ends with a, a little bit depressing because Isaiah is this, prophet who's going out to minister to the Israelites and he's going to preach and preach and preach and preach and no one is going to listen to him but that's for a different story so nobody listens to him no so um so we're not going to talk about that part so God is exalted again what does exalted mean Above. High. high and lifted up and in, in an on a place of honor um it's always important that we honor God in, in everything that we do and that we exalt him in everything that we do. And even if we don't exalt God because we are in sin, God is still exalted whether we exalt him or not. He is still lifted high enough. He's still on the throne and he is still exalted no matter what sinners do. But in as Christians, if we're Christians, um, we should want to exalt God in, with our lives and with the way that we speak and act and think and share the gospel and we can exalt him in in our daily lives what's uh, what's an example of a way that we could exalt god in our lives but through prayer okay by telling him how how can you exalt god make him high and honor him honor him you can honor him good job how gracie um 
Do sing to him. Singing, that's another good way, yep. You can sing and exalt him through uh, singing worship songs. Gideon? I was going to say singing. Oh, Gideon was going to say singing. What's something we can do? Okay, reading, reading uh, our Bible. How about being obedient? <laughs> yeah, we can be obedient and, with the way that we think and act, and that can exalt God in our daily lives. Gideon? Sharing the gospel. Sharing the gospel, yeah. You exalt God, and you lift him up, and you you honor him in a place of exaltation when you share his story with other people, and when you um, pray, and when you sing, and when you worship, and when you read the Bible, and when you share the gospel, and when you're obedient to his word. So that is that lesson. So um, next week, if we are not back at the church, then we'll be here again. Um, and I don't remember if we have an E word next week or it might be learn moving on to F. I'm not sure. E, A, B, C, D, E, F. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, right now we're going to say goodbye to our friends. And don't forget to click the link to do the uh, Bible verse with us. Bye. Bye.